We found a 1 of 25 1939 convertible that's been sitting in a garage for decades. And this is one of the most packed videos we've ever filmed because we pulled this thing out, did an entire detail on it. And at the end of the video, we took it to a Cleveland car museum where we got a full tour and got to see a lot of really cool cars, including things they don't even have on display. And we got to take you guys with us. So taking a quick look over the car, what we have here is a 1939 Daimler DB18 Sport Special, which is 1 of 25, that the owner decided decades ago he couldn't keep up with it anymore so he put it away in storage. And then after sitting for such a long time, he decided that he was gonna donate it to the Crawford Auto Aviation Museum here in Cleveland. So the first thing we had to do was see if these tires would hold any air because they were all flat. And after starting to pump it up, sure enough, it actually held air. So we were able to get this car out easier. And Mike had to jump in it in order to turn the wheel. And right away was cool feat number one, suicide doors. Along with cool feat number two, it's right hand drive. So as we start pulling it out, I wanna ask you guys the question of the video. So leave it in the comments below. What do you guys think this car is worth. It's really hard to tell with a car that's a 1 of 25. It's this old and rare, but if you had to put a price on it, what do you think it would be? So we started by cleaning the wheels and getting these white walls completely white again, but then we decided to take a little break from cleaning and walk around the car and show you guys all the cool things we found out about it. And really quickly, if you're not subscribed to the channel, we're trying to hit 700,000 by the end of this year, so please hit the subscribe button. It really helps us out. All right, so I'm pretty sure this is the oldest vehicle that we've ever worked on. And there's a lot of peculiar, peculiar, it's pretty peculiar. It's peculiar. <laughs> First off, right-hand drive, which we've seen before. First car we've ever done with suicide doors. But then after you look into the vehicle, you see obviously that it's right-hand drive. But what is really cool is that the shifter is still on the right side. And then apparently there's a little storage compartment there as well. Oh, we yeah. did look up a little bit of info on this car. Apparently it has a whopping 15 horsepower. What else we noticed that is kind of quirky and different that we've never seen before is the placement of the battery. It looks like it goes right underneath the passenger footwell. Apparently this is the block of wood that goes on top, which makes me wonder if this whole entire frame is all wooden underneath here. Let's try to open the engine bay. Oh, it's a whole piece. Oh, jeez. This is heavy. Wow. Whoa, look at the sliders. What? Dude, have you ever seen anything like that? No, I've never seen that. Wow. This vehicle is manufactured by the Daimler Co. LTD Coventry, England, under all or any of the following British patents. And it's fitted with the Daimler fluid flywheel transmission. Even the firewall of this car is made out of wood. But imagine your VIN number being six digits. I really don't know. Um, it looks like it's on a hinge though. There's a spring on the other side. And if you look inside the gap. That's not a spring. What is that? That is a coil. I have no idea what this is. Holy cow. That's electric. This is so, fiberglass. That's fiberglass, but the inside there is electric for something. I have no idea. So while we go ahead and take the seats out, if you know what those could be for, go ahead and leave a comment below. So like we were saying, this is one of the oldest cars that we've ever worked on, meaning it has very little safety precautions built in, much like this back seat where Mike's gonna show you the incredibly difficult uh, method of removal. It's a quick disconnect rear seat, which mm -hmm. I think is actually I ingenious. Believe, yeah, it's usually- if you just go up, <laughs> that's it. It just has four pillars that you put the seat down in and that's it. And then you, you pray. You hope. So Brett just pointed something out, he said, that there was something quirky about the trunk back here. And it looks as if there's some way to open up a secret com Whoa, that does not Oh, holy no. crap, that's where the spare is. That is freaking cool. E. There was definitely my mouth in here. Ooh, Ooh, these are the blades to the side of the car. Oh. It's missing a whole fender, uh, fender wheel cover. They're in great shape though. Yeah, they are. 
Yeah. Does it slack? Can we put it in? I'm not gonna leave it. Dude, though. hopefully we can find the pin. That way we can. We'll dismantle the interior. So that was some of the cool stuff we found out about the car, and we found even more later. So make sure you keep watching. But then we got to finally washing the car because we had to get it done so we could get it over to the Crawford. So here's a question we have for you guys. We've never seen this GB badging on the back of a car before, but if you know what it means, leave a comment below. So while we're washing the car, I also want to remind you, we have a tour of the museum at the end of this video as well. And we picked this car up, detailed it, and delivered it to the museum absolutely for free for you guys and for everybody that wants to go see it at the museum. So make sure you watch all the way through. And if you're enjoying the video, please give it a like. It helps us reach more people. And now to clean the rag top, we used APC with a drill brush with the absolute softest brush and basically no pressure to make sure that we don't damage this thing at all. And once we sprayed it all away, you guys will see the big difference that it made in color. It really brought it back to life. Then we went ahead and covered the airbox and then cleaned the engine and then after we cleaned it, we re-greased the strut pole. And lastly, before drying the car, we're gonna remove any iron that's in the paint and use our clay bars to make sure we get any of the contaminants out of it. That way, later when we go to polish it, the process is a breeze. So after reviewing the interior canvas of the rag top, it's, uh, well, as Mike would say, it's seen better days. It's seen better days. Uh, we talked to Larry, the curator of the museum, and we asked him how we should proceed, and he said that the best plan of action is to actually cut this interior canvas out, and it will actually reveal the, the nice canvas on the other side, the rag top on the other side, because obviously this is not very presentable. There is a lot of dust that's falling. I'm gonna have to put on my safety glasses. Mike, put yours on. Um, I wonder how much asbestos is in here. All right, so that's probably about as far as we want to take it. I think this looks significantly better. This is actually a protective canvas that blocks the, uh, the corners of the frame from poking out of the, the canvas on the exterior. So I think uh, we're going to call it quits there. So now with that done, we'll go ahead and start vacuuming out the car.
Now for the glove box, we're gonna open it up and first we noticed that there were definitely mice in here. So we vacuumed out any of the droppings they left behind. And then we used some cleaner in there with our softest drill brush. And again, we used very light pressure. Then we dried it as much as possible with the vacuum again and followed that up with a microfiber towel. A lot of the materials and substrates in the interior are very fine and very delicate, including the leather, and it's not necessarily the actual leather, but the dye of the leather. You'll actually see that the brush is going to turn blue because it's pulling some of the dye out of the leather. So that's why we're not gonna be using heat, major abrasion. Trying to clean these panels, the goal is to pretty much just make them look significantly better with the least amount of damage to the underlying color, so. Same deal with the fabric at the bottom of the door card. We're not going to use any drill brush. We're just going to spray on the cleaner and then extract it, try and avoid really any friction. Better safe than sorry. And now it's time to clean the carpets and I have to tell you guys for how old this carpet is and it being unknown how long these stains have actually been in it, a lot of them actually came out and it was very satisfying. Now we're gonna go ahead and take care of these old seats by cleaning them up. And then after they're clean, we'll go ahead and condition them. But because they've been sitting for so long, they need a lot of conditioner. So we'll do one application, let it soak in, and then we'll do another one.
And then after getting the seats clean, we pulled the rails off from underneath, cleaned them up, re-greased them, and then put them back on so they would slide better. Now we finish up the interior by cleaning the steering wheel and the beautiful wood on the dashboard, but then we got a call from the owner telling us something that I think some of you may have had an inkling about already. just found out some uh, key information about the, uh, the Daimler uh, and I had some questions about the history of it you know we were told that it was a 1 of 25 1939 car very very special it's still a very special car but I called the original owner and he told me that it's actually a 1951 Daimler DB18 uh, apparently they kept very similar styling because obviously the war happened and they had to cut production so they didn't get to make nearly as many of those cars as they wanted so they kind of kept some classic styling and I guess brought back that uh, that kind of vehicle so um, not as rare as we thought but apparently still a pretty low production vehicle but uh, Brent's already edited half the video right now so <laughs> we don't really have a choice but to keep that half because uh, the video goes live in 12 hours so we tried to do our homework and thankfully caught it before half the video is over. So there you go. There seems to have been a mix up of information between multiple parties. And whenever we make these videos, I try to talk to whoever I can to get as much info about the cars that I can relay to you guys. And the info that I was given is what you guys heard for the beginning of the video. So that's why we believed it was a 1939 Daimler and not what it actually is, which is a 1951. <laughs> So on the other side of the car, this little piece was missing. And while we were polishing, I saw that I could like move this piece a little bit. So I decided to push on the top and it pops out like this. So I think it's a blinker. I think that this thing pops up when you're turning, but I'm not too sure. If you guys have any idea what this could be, please leave a comment. And now we're gonna go ahead and polish the chrome. So what I like to do is take four odd steel wool with Blue Magic Metal Polish, and I'll really rub it in there. And then after you wipe it away, you take a clean towel with isopropyl alcohol diluted with water, you spray it on there, and then you wipe it all off. And you'll even see that I'm able to remove that surface layer rust.
All right, so we have the DB-18 loaded up. We're gonna take it to the Crawford Auto and Aviation Museum. I've never been there, neither has Mike or Brent. Me and Brent have been to the overflow to work on some cars in the past, but never the actual museum. So I'm pumped, here we go. So we wanna give a huge thank you again to the Crawford Auto Aviation Museum for letting us work on this car and come check out the museum and get a full tour for you guys. I think they have some really cool stuff that you guys are gonna love seeing right now. I highly recommend checking them out. Go follow them on Instagram or go check them out in person. Everything that you could need to find them, I've left in the description below. So upon arrival, the first thing we had to do was back our trailer up to their elevator and then get the car off. And then with the in the elevator, our tour guide John closed the doors, took us down, and this is where the real magic happened. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. Really cool. Here we are. Holy smokes. That's the reaction we want. Wow. And this right here is the first DeLorean ever produced, along with some other stainless steel cars. But then John took us to the secret back rooms and let me show you what we found. This is a 55 gold wing, uh, original. Wow. Original paint, original everything, and never been restored. Oh. With the luggage and everything? Yeah. It is. Wow. Quite the gem. So you're looking at about two mil. Yeah. Worth of car. All right, so we are being kicked out of the museum by John, who has been gracious enough to show us all the cars and give us all the background and history. This museum is incredible. If you guys are ever in Cleveland, Ohio, you should definitely come check this out if you have any passion for automotive uh, history and preservation. With that being said, in the description below is their Instagram as well as their website. Uh, thank you again so much for the opportunity. My pleasure. Uh, to work on a piece of history like that. And, uh, it. Oh, of course. Yeah, Glick. Wonderful yeah. to have you guys here. Anytime. The place is yours. <laughs> Not the stuff in it. I was going to say, <laughs> be careful what you say. <laughs> but, uh, and if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, please hit subscribe to see more videos like this. Hit like if you want to help this video reach more people. And we will see you next week.